127. Baby part. So those are people with official titles at Planned Parenthood being recorded and they didn't know it, talking about how they are basically, oh yeah, a liver high demand. So they abort the baby and then they'll cut the baby up illegally. And then under the surface, they will sell the baby body parts for other medical experimentation, things that you're not supposed to be doing. Uh, not all, yeah. but yes, but some. I mean, that's just like a case by case basis. Exactly. Just do whatever's safest and best. Right, right, yeah, so, of course. Yeah, so if we can do it in it's usually a lot of medical patients. Right, right. I, I think amongst our providers, to like encourage more intact service for this purpose, I think would be challenging. But we still do intact DMEs. You do, yeah. okay. Can you completely intact DNA? We still oh. do intact DNA. So. You do, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. at a conference talking about every time I do a DNA and I'm like oh there's a, a lung there is a kidney there is a stomach it is fair to summarize that basically these abortion clinics are just like auto part junkyards Cyclops in the clan you got to know the difference that's stolen valor <laughs> that's why I decided to run for president because I the, the the clan isn't wearing their uniform anymore. So you've got to get out there and vote January 6th. Uh, excuse me. October 7th. Obama, Harris, Biden. I'm in there somewhere. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 put on the brakes, put on the brakes. Welcome, welcome, boys and girls, children of age, all ages, swifties, bookies, bun-eyed eppers, right and left wing wackos, woodchucks and chuckettes, kings and queens of the Northeast Kingdom to another version of Itch News to Us and uh, antiquated machinists. Who are we? Where are we? Yeah, you are watching Itch News to Us. We're Newport, Vermont. Shoulders TV News. What is new? Hugh New Brown Q, as locals say. And all hail the cadaver in chief. He was mumbling something incoherently out. Uh, man, it, uh, I can't believe it. And uh, yeah, there he is. There he is right there. There's old Joe. He's moving mighty slow. They, they should, you know, how can they do this? How can they do this? How can they let this senile guy be president? You know, I mean, half the world's on fire, and this bonehead is is running the show supposedly, or that laughing gas bag VP of his. Uh, we want peace and prosperity, and uh, hopefully we'll get it, because these polls can't be right. I mean, uh, the Camelback or Camel Toe, uh, she, the polls were showing just uh, just recently. The polls were showing that she had a, a lower approval rating rating than uh, than Biden did, just recently. And uh, suddenly she shot up in the polls. I think it's misinformation. Anyways, we're all inclusive here. We cater to men, women, men, women, men, 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 them, and uh, defund the police. I don't think so. We'll leave that up to Camel Camilla. Yeah, she did such a good job of defunding the police in. Uh, in in uh, Minneapolis, like that bonehead with her, uh, that's she's running with that friggin' communist. And uh, anyways, but where are the Bronze Age Invisible Sky God? You're gonna beat you and forgive you and beat you and forgive you. And uh, climate crisis, yeah, sure, okay, yeah. Just give us all your money and we'll change the weather, right, Philo? Yeah, more taxes will mean a better climate, right? Yeah, yeah. And we're all going to stuff you in electric vehicles that you don't want. 
you remember that old song? Uh, I can't remember the name of the band. It was called B- Ball of Confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Remember one, one of the lines he says, and, and Congress says more taxes will will solve everything. Yeah. And the band played on. Yeah. And the <laughs> band played on. I love that song. <laughs> Ball of Confusion. And yeah. That came out in 68, didn't it? I think so. Yep. Yeah. Oh, in the booth, uh, we have Philo T. Farnsworth, College of Musical Knowledge. You can see him waving through the glass there. Uh, there's a shaper. Nobody ever used those damn things. I'd be, I've, walked, I've been in many machine shops all over the place. Those things, nobody ever used them. Nobody. I mean, the, we used to uh, hop on top of them and ride them like a, a friggin' bucking bronco in, in trade school. Speaking of ancient machinists, that's Part- Steve and I, both ancient machinists. <laughs> yeah they <laughs> nobody used them nobody man well anyways uh yeah so we got this gas bag nobody voted for her. not one person voted for her you know what i mean nobody they just slid her in through the back door like a friggin bad fruitcake and uh she's a nut she doesn't do anything she's uh She's bad to her staff. Her staff had quit. And, uh, and then out of nowhere, you know, she just uh, absconds with one of Trump's uh, policy papers where Trump was saying that uh, he's going to get rid of uh, IRS taxes on tips, right? And get rid of taxes on Social Security uh, income for older people. Uh, which is, it's a travesty. It should never have happened to begin with. Thank Reagan for that. Yeah. Uh, friggin you know look at i've had enough of this baby boomer bashing okay because we went through this uh all our lives they you know first they they came up in the uh in the 80s and they said well yep we're sorry here you know but uh we've misspent the money and we've uh we misspent the money and so if uh, you want your parents to get social security you're gonna have to pay a lot more in social security taxes mister so we all got beaten to death with that one. And we had to unemployment pay. taxes. Hey, yeah. Unemployment taxes. If you were unemployed, they tax that too. Yeah. Unemployment benefits. Yeah. Crazy. So we wound up paying more in uh, in taxes for our uh, for our parents, uh, so that they could get their full benefits, and then we had to wind up paying um in paying in more for our benefits and uh which they are now giving away to 10 million wetbacks that that biden and uh, harris had let in and now we see why they're they've, they've come in because they're uh they're gonna allow them to vote that's what they let them in for they let them in so that they could vote you know and i'll tell you what they're starting to let a lot of people with uh, green cards uh get a fast track to citizenship philo yep and the thing is is the people who came here say you know up until up until uh four years ago the people who came here and did everything the right way and and got in line and learned english and you know and and had a uh, and didn't take any welfare benefits or public charge law and stuff like that all those people who did it right those people are angry as an old south bend lay they had to change the friggin gears on don't don't get me going and uh so so those people the people that did it the right way they're more likely to vote for trump because they want to get uh they they want to expel these people if they came in and did this stuff the right way you know the last thing they want to do is is see these wetbacks just hop in here not learn any english not learn anything about the culture suddenly they get driver's licenses did you see that oh yeah yeah that zipper head that two-handed waving guy <laughs> yeah uh waltz uh what are they what are they calling them a waltz or uh tampon tim <laughs> Tampon Tim says we got to put tampons in the middle school boys' bathrooms, Philo. In Minnesota. Yeah, good old Minnesota is going to have to teach us. I thought the people there had more sense, but I guess not. Nope, I'm telling you. 
It's these machines. It's the machines. And speaking of which, Tina Peters, um, she had her case. Yeah. Um, her trial is going on, I think, in, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's her case mirrors the Patrick Burns case in District of Columbia. Uh, the U.S. is only uh, 71 countries use these faulty machines. That's what they say they're faulty. Uh, she got found uh, not guilty on three charges. You got to see the trial. You can go to frankspeech.com, and uh, and they they prove that they you know that they could flip the votes uh, they because they're using vote flipping serbian software philo oh wasn't that the best there is yeah 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 for flipping votes that's the best you can get yeah when i think of uh computers i go right to yugoslavia and serbia every time yep i think of borneo <laughs> yeah <laughs> yum yum eat them up <laughs> And uh, you can see more about this stuff at uh, TeaPartyPatriots.org. But uh, the Georgia uh, curling case, there, there's a machine case down there also where they uh, had that expert named uh, Professor Haldeman. He opened the vote machine and hacked it in front of the judge with a ballpoint pen. That case is still pending. So it looks like they're just going to drag their feet until they can, you know, try and steal another election. It's crazy, well, it doesn't matter man. who wins. The other side's going to claim fraud. It doesn't matter. It well, really we got, matter. what we got to do is we got to swamp them. That's all. We, we just have to swamp them uh, and, and it, it, they're, make it a landslide, you know, like 1972 all over again. Hmm. Or 1988. Yeah. Oh, man. Poor Dukakis. He didn't know which end was up. Oh, yeah. Well, I tell you about my buddy Gary. Uh, Gary Hughes. God bless him. His, uh, his father was Colonel Teddy Hughes. He was uh, a colonel. He made it out of the jungle. He was with uh, Merrill's Marauders. Okay. They went into the Burmese jungle to, uh, to fight the Japanese and uh they came out they lost something like i don't know they lost half of their men at least maybe more but anyways teddy be uh teddy became um a colonel and he was like stationed at fort devons i think so anyways they adopted gary and gary kept getting into trouble uh it, it, it was mostly stupid stuff you know it was nothing malicious or you know, or, or, or didn't, nobody got hurt. It was just stupid stuff. But he could play the piano, man. This guy was insane. You should have heard him, Philo. Mm -hmm. Classical, just ultra talented, right? Sure. And uh, so they kept, uh, they kept arresting him on this and that. And finally, they put him into, uh, into prison down at uh, Concord, the penitentiary in Concord, Mass, right? Yep. And... <laughs> And Dukakis comes along and says, "What these, uh, what these boys need is to be rehabilitated, Philo." Yep. Okay. They need to learn a skill or some kind of craft or something, and uh, and then they'll uh, then they'll be productive members of society. So what did they do with Gary? <laughs> he took pilot's lessons. Goodness gracious! Yeah, you know how much pilot's lessons cost. I don't know. I don't know. It's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. It costs a lot of money to fly a plane. Yeah, this is a shadoof. Uh, old Egyptian water uh, water wheels. Uh, waterboard? Yeah. So so anyways, Gary gets out of uh, gets out of the pen. And what does he do? I mean, if you've ever seen if you've ever seen the lock on a Cessna, mm -hmm. they don't have locking steering columns. They have like a little baby lock on the door handle. You know what I mean? You could pick it with a paper clip, you know? So uh, back then. So Gary would go down to the Fitchburg airport and he'd just routinely borrow, he'd borrow Cessnas. 
<laughs> and so we're out at the campsite one night, uh, one afternoon. We're going to, you know, it's Friday night. We used to have parties up there. And people would come from, geez, I don't know, two or three towns over. And uh, and we'd park behind LaFerrier's house. Uh, he, Gordon didn't like you parking in the apple orchard, but we could park behind LaFerrier's house and walk up to the campsite. And we always had a great big fire going and stuff, you know, it was, it was a good time, right? Well, we're, out there, we're going out there to get the, uh, with the chainsaws and get some, rustle up some firewood and stuff for the party. And uh, we hear this, uh, hear this, and then, shh, the, you know, then there's no engine noise. And then we hear this, hey, you a-holes. And we're like, what the heck? What is that? And you look up, and there's Gary. He cut the engine in the Cessna, and he's dropping friggin' empty beer bottles on us. <laughs> And we're all like, what the hell? We're waving. He's all like, get you a hose. Get out of the way. Look out below. And uh, that was crazy Gary, man. And then one time uh, I had a real good harvest and I had a boatload of money. And we decided to go down to New York City and, and uh, have some fun. So uh, we hopped in my wife's car. And we drove out to West Point. Little did I know, Gary's mother lived in a condo in West Point. And she, uh, he winds up stealing a credit card. And we, uh, we stayed at the, uh, Gary uh, got us a room at the Drake Hotel. We're on like the uh, eighth or 10th floor or something like that, Philo. Yeah. And we decided to, you know, to, to fire up a, 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 a spleef. And, uh, so we opened the window to uh, let some fresh air in so the house detective wouldn't come up and bust us for smoking dope in the room or weed. And, uh, and and the window kept shutting. So we tried, we looked around for something to hold the window open and uh, all there was was a New York City directory, right? The thing's like four inches thick, you know what I mean? The yellow pages and the white pages. Yep. So we open the window and we put the the, the phone book in there, and it's like uh, the 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 phone book. It just did a mush because we had it standing standing up straight like this, and uh, it did the mush and it fell down. It's like look out below. <laughs> it was luckily it didn't hit anybody. It would have broken their neck. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so what does Gary do? Gary uh, calls up an escort service. Oh goodness! Oh yeah, and, you know. Next thing I know, I'm sitting there. I'm having a. I'm having a. I got my feet up. I'm having a drink from the mini bar, and and uh, this girl comes in the room, and she says, "I told you. I told you I wasn't going to do two people." And I'm all like, "Look, honey," I says, "I'm married. I'm going to go for a walk. I'll catch you guys later." So I went out and uh, looked around. Oh, and because this is August, uh, I wore my Jerry Garcia shirt for the days between, as they say, the days between Jerry's birthday and the day he died. I might have missed it, I think. I don't know. I'm getting brain fade in my old age. Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, Camilla... Who, who is now did an about face and she's suddenly gonna she's gonna uh, tell the IRS not to tax tips uh, she could do it right now her and Biden could do that right now Philo yep there's nothing stopping them from doing it right it's a campaign issue pardon me there it's a campaign issue they're waiting until they win exactly it, like all the other stupid issues meanwhile a year ago in February the uh, the headlines were uh, from uh, you can look this up from February seventh, twenty twenty three. The headlines were Biden plans to crack down on waiters' tips. He's going to put crack in their tips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's going to prevent them from getting crack with their tips. Oh, no more crack. That well, that's the there's your service. Service going to go down now. You know they estimate that a billion people. Uh, watched the Trump Musk interview, Philo? Really? 
Yeah, one of out of every seven people on Earth saw it. It was that something went wrong with that, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, they had to uh, they had to divide it up into pieces because uh, the servers couldn't take it, or it was hacked. One of the two. I think the, they said the Iranians did it or some sh <laughs> crap. <laughs> the Libyans, Marty, the Libyans. Uh, oh, and uh, my buddy in Florida wanted me to mention this. For all you Christians who are out there, you and you and you and you and you, who were offended by the uh, <laughs> by the uh, opening of the Olympics. Oh yes. Uh, and and the subsequent, you know, the beating up on Christian symbols and stuff. You can lodge an FCC complaint. You know, you can complain to the Olympic Committee, but they don't give a sweet patoot. But you they know, can't even run the Olympics. Yeah, you can uh, you can lodge a complaint with the Federal Communications Commission, and uh, just look it up in your uh, in the in your white pages, or look it up online. Call them up and say you want to register a complaint. Uh, not that they'll do anything with a with a liberal wackos in the White House or communist wackos and uh, oh speaking of which uh, Philo was nice enough we put up the uh, we've got three short videos um, in the front and back uh, added to this week's show uh, Camilla Camilla whatever her name is Camel Toe Harris when she was uh, Attorney General there was a undercover case where this guy he went, uh, he did like uh, an O'Keefe. He, uh, he went undercover and used a buttonhole camera and he went to a Planned Parenthood uh, meeting or something. And these women were bragging about uh, selling body parts from uh, aborted babies, okay? So the judge just unsealed it last week. These, these records, these videos have been sealed for 10 freaking years. So Charlie Kirk, Kirk ran, them, uh, ran them last week. So Philo and I bring them to you where these people are joking about, you know, making cracking jokes about, uh, about uh, selling aborted baby parts. Lungs, livers, arms, legs, you name I don't see how it. they could do that anyways. Pardon me? I don't see how they can do that anyway. Yeah, uh, it's there's some kind of research loophole. Yeah, I do know one thing. You know what they do with the foreskins they cut off? Do you know what they do with the foreskins they cut off? They put it in women's uh, facial cream. Lovely. No joke. And that's why I, I sometimes call these ladies that do that, that use this stuff, dick face and piss head. <laughs> Okay. This is no joke. This has been going on for years. They, there's something in that in the foreskin that is is a beauty product, and they've been using it for decades now. I'm getting a lot of echo from you for some reason. Oh, okay. I maybe because is the door open? Yeah, I'll go. I'll shut it. But I didn't want to put the fan on. No, no. It's it's maybe maybe you just turn it up a little. That's all. Okay. Yeah, but anyways. Okay. Uh, Kathy Hochul over in New York State um, just uh, announced $200 million for New York State electric buses and charging stations, Philo. we Isn't that great? $200 million. It's nuts. It's nuts, man. Uh, oh, man. And I'm getting so sick of these, uh, these COPD commercials. You know, it's bad enough that when I was in the hospital, I had to listen to this roommate hacking and coughing up a lung, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I got a neighbor who won't quit smoking, and she's coughing up a lung and hacking and spitting, and it's just nasty, man. And But now, right at, right at the dinner hour, too, this is what really kills me, at the dinner hour, Philo, at the dinner hour, we've got this COPD uh, medicine commercial where this it shows this old nag hacking and coughing up uh, coughing up some oyster. It's just horrible. <laughs> it's like Jesus, man. 
and she looks like death warmed over you know she's got greasy hair and no makeup on and it's just it's just horrible oh, man it? horrible i think i know her yeah oh and here's here's the modern machining this stuff is wild yeah we saw some good stuff yeah and uh home depot has lowered its sales expectations philo yes and bloomberg upped its recession chances to something like 48 percent now yeah that's always good yeah yeah and uh the cpi and the uh, consumer price index and the producer price index numbers came out and what does uh camelback uh harris blame it on philo price gouging well that's part of it but not all of it yeah oh it's it's not that it's it's not because her and joe just are printing up money like like drunken sailors right that's got nothing to do with it uh it's uh it's price gouging it's crazy man it's crazy whenever they give you a simple solution that means there's more to it than you realize a lot more and uh i wonder what the heck they're making in this video it looks pretty cool whatever the heck it is yeah and uh uh, I saw this interview with uh, Tommy Robinson from England. You see where the Brits are threatening? They're threatening uh, um, uh, Elon Musk and, and, and anybody, uh, anybody, they're threatening people in the United States for posting hate speech that goes to uh, England on social media. I heard you, about that. Huh? I heard about that, yeah. Yeah, is that crazy? Well, we don't want to offend anybody now, do we? yeah well that's the thing the brits came out uh last weekend or something there was over a million uh real british people in the streets and they're sick of it because of all these muslims they're bringing in oh yeah yeah that's getting pretty nasty yeah there are forty thousand muslims on the terror watch list at the united kingdom philo and there are only eighty thousand people in the armed forces and they silenced tommy robinson there are three thousand uh uh jihadis that are monitored 24 7 by the authorities in england and yet who are they throwing in jail the people that bring this information public you know the uh the the real britons the real brits that have been there for generations well this is what i don't understand if these people left their country because it's so horrible why do they want the same thing in england or the u.s why do they keep exporting all their crap to new countries? Because they just, it's just, they just didn't get it quite right. They want Sharia law. And they're never going to get it right because, <laughs> well, we don't, we, don't, we don't even want to get started on that. Yeah, well, I hope not because there's a lesson here. The lesson is that you never let them take away your guns. Because once they disarm you, you're at the mercy of some friggin' Muslim with a machete who lives next door to you and doesn't like your music or your hair or your kids' tattoos or whatever. <laughs> or your heavy metal, huh? Yeah, or your heavy metal, exactly. <laughs> oh, you notice how more and more every day that Joe Biden is starting to look like uh, Jeff Dunham's puppet Walter? <laughs> a wrinkled up old skunk. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy, man. Oh, and did you see uh, Caitlin Collins from CNN was on the Stephen Colbert show, right? Yep. And he he, he starts asking her a question. It's something like, "Yeah, uh, you know, we, you, we know that uh, you people at CNN are you know strictly news that you're not like uh, you're not editorializing." And even the audience couldn't take that, Philo. They started laughing out loud. Yep. And she says, she says to Colbert, I didn't, uh, she says, I didn't know that was supposed to be a laugh line. And he looks at the audience, he says, well, I, I didn't think so either, but it, apparently it is. Because CNN isn't, <laughs> isn't a damn uh, impartial news show. I don't, I can't tell you how many times I heard CNN saying, these masks work, we've got to get vaccinated over and over and over the only one worse was rachel mad cow yo yeah yeah it's crazy speaking of which there's a 
there's a new uh, a Lancet cancer study that came out in August. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the one to three times higher in the 1990 Gen X cohort than in the 1955 cohort. Small intestinal cancers, Philo, were up 256%. Hmm. Kidney and renal pelvis cancers, 192%. Pancreas cancers, male and female, 161%. Women's liver and bile duct cancer, 105%. For 30-year-olds, the rates are uh, 12% across the board, um, according to uh, Children Health, Children's Health Defense. But you can go see the study yourself at lancet.org or .com. And uh, left unaddressed were uh, radiation from cell phones, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, routers, stuff like that. Oh, and the January 6th arrests and prosecutions were up 43% this year, Pilo. Yep. 43%. And you you can bet your bippy that if these people were the same ones that were like breaking into windows and stuff like that, they would be showing that on TV like night and day. Yeah, here's Bunky here. We, we've got him breaking into the windows right there. Well, they're not. They're just rounding up people that happen to have uh, that happen to ping their cell phones, and let that be a lesson to you. If you want to go somewhere and be private, you got to get yourself a Faraday bag for your phone. Okay, it's like the uh, RFID wallets. You know, you can. Uh, I, I've got one. You can get them online cheap enough. It's the same thing. You can get them cheap online, and you put your phone inside that bag. And uh, it can't ping any towers at all unless you take it out of the bag. You gotta, uh, you gotta do it. Yeah. And speaking of which, that Cheetah woman that resigned from the secret, uh, the not so secret service, Philo. Yes. She, uh, she said that all the all the January sixth, um, all the January sixth. Uh, uh, phone calls and text messages between uh, SS agents were erased. They've all been erased as part of a software update. Well, isn't that clever? Yeah. So it looks like we'll never know what happened with uh, with uh, Kamala, Kamala Harris getting close to that bomb at the Democratic National Committee headquarters or the, the, the other bomb at the RNC headquarters. Yeah, I guess we'll just... It's too bad, you know. It was all right there, and we just, uh, you know, we had to make room. We had to, we had to, yeah, it was a software update. That's a ticket. Yep. It's crazy, man. Crazy. Oh, and the Department of Homeland Security let this Iranian terrorist enter the U.S., gave him cash, let him go, and, uh, and then, uh, he, he was the one that tried to get a hitman to kill Trump. <laughs> what a clever boy. Yeah. You can see, uh, you can see his story at justthenews.com. These people are insane. They're, they're starting to fly him in from the Darien Gap in, uh, in, in um, Colombia. They're, they're, not, they're not even making them uh, come up through Mexico anymore, Philo. They're bringing in planes, plane after plane after plane from, uh, from Colombia to the United States. Well, I got a tickle out of it when they started sending uh, all the immigrants to the blue states that were saying, oh, we got to let them all in. And when they came here, they goes, oh, my gosh, look at what we created. Isn't that something? New York, yeah. Chicago, all these liberal states. Well, it's good because now they're going to vote for Trump because they're pissed. They won't get it. Oh, they, they, they are. They, they're pissed. I'll bet you right now Trump cannot win this, and it's too bad, but he won't. It will. We he, can he, hope he, that we get a Republican Congress. Yeah. We'll, it, it, the people are pissed. You underestimate how angry people are. No, I don't. I see it from my steps on every day. <laughs> we've, we've watched our money turn into worthless pieces of friggin' toilet paper uh, for all these infrastructure changes. Where's all the infrastructure changes, Philo? Oh, we have to send it on, spend it on welfare people. Yeah, yeah, we're spending it. We're spending it on on third world deadbeats. Crazy, free medical, free dental, and uh, 
they just got this one guy. What the hell is it? Uh, God, I wrote I wrote down his name. Oh, this his name is Alvarez. He was a, a Haitian. They flew him into the country, Philo. They flew him into the country, put him up at a uh, at a, a a motel in Rockland, Massachusetts, where he's 24 years old, a black kid, where he promptly promptly raped a 15 year old girl, right? Yep. And then he uh, he flew in on the CHNV uh, thing. It's the uh, highest levels in, in in I don't know hundreds in in, in ever. Uh, you can see his story at the uh, Law and Border or Fox News. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, they're they're starting to keep track of this immigrant crime, and it's nuts. They got him in uh, in New York or something. He was trying to flee. Massachusetts wouldn't turn him over to uh, to DHS, even though he was wanted for raping a minor, Philo. She must be a great business, huh? You and I can't even look at a at a kid and we get arrested. Yeah. We Why can, would you want to? You know. I mean, is, I mean, just in passing, if you pass one on the street, oh, he's looking at me. Yeah. Oh, this Me Too movement makes me sick. Yeah, the Washington Post, they've tried to censor Trump and Musk, the UK uh, also. They say that they're just a couple of rich white guys. What are you kidding me? You got one of the world's foremost uh, developers of skyscrapers and, and, and stuff, and you've got the, one of the, the world's foremost engineers who, who can land rockets on a barge in the ocean like friggin' a Buck Rogers episode. And uh, they get together for an interview, a two hour interview, and uh, oh, it's just a couple of rich white guys, Philo. Yes, but uh, Musk is pushing these electric cars. Isn't that funny? Yeah, well, he's doing it right. I mean, there are people who want him. God bless him, let him buy him. You yeah. know, if there's a market for him, let him rip. Just but, don't force me to get one. Unfortunately, that's the problem. Everybody's forcing you to get one. <clears throat> yeah. Well, they're forcing us to get these crappy little, crappy little GM and Ford ones that they're, oh man, I, I'd, I'd, I'd get a Tesla if it was, you know, my second car, you know what I mean? Exactly, because it doesn't go far enough. Yeah. Well, that's just it. If you had it for around town, yeah, it'd be great. I'd, yeah. I wouldn't mind one at all, as long as it was not my only car. Exactly. And... Uh, yeah, Tim. They're calling him A Waltz Tampon Tim. He he like uh like Governor uh, Phil Scott here. He had a snitch line, uh for to to rat out your uh, neighbors and stuff. He jailed he jailed COVID small businesses, Philo, left and right. Okay, the liquor stores, the uh, the strip clubs. He left the strip clubs open, Philo. Why weren't we invited? Yeah, really. Jeez, now he, I'm pissed. He left the strip clubs open, the big box stores, the liquor stores. They were all left open. This woman who had a restaurant open, Philo. Yeah. I saw her on Fox News. She moved to Iowa, by the way. She did 90 days in jail. Well, they gave her 90 days in jail. She did 60. And that's another thing. I'm getting sick of this smoke coming down from Canada, damn it. Yeah, Pierre, what are you doing up there, eh? Yeah, and it's going to get worse tomorrow. You can't even see Jay Peak today for crying out loud. Oh, that's your favorite place, isn't it? Yeah, Ponzi Peak. Well, not anymore. They, they rooted him out. Yeah, gave him the boot finally. But yeah, it's, uh, it's nuts. They showed the smoke, uh, smoke map, and we're going to get clobbered tomorrow. They're already warning people. Yeah, Camilla wants Medicare for all, for everybody. All these, all these wetbacks that came swimming into the country, all the ones they're flying in so that they can get them to vote for them. You know how much it's going to cost, Philo? More than I have. Yeah, they they estimate as it had cost thirty-five trillion dollars for Medicare for all. 
These people are insane. Oh, and now we find out that the 10% for the big guy or half our income for pops, as Hunter said, uh, the Hunter uh, Biden did uh, seek U.S. Department of State help with the Ukraine. And he still hasn't been arrested on any FARA violations. FARA being the Foreign Agent Registration Act. Crazy. Oh, and Trump filed a lawsuit against the Department of Justice for that Mar-a-Lago raid uh, because it was totally off the wall and not uh, kosher. Uh, and the FBI kind of kicked the can and said uh, they admitted that we should have got authority and, uh, and worked with Trump's lawyers to get the documents they wanted and uh, instead of searching the whole house. Oh, and get this. You know that the thing I hate the most is censorship, Philo. Yep. Well, the good folks here at NEKTV's news division were nice enough to print me up this, uh, this article. And you can see it at uh, at Matt Taibbi. He's a uh, he's he's another one. He's a former liberal, uh, like me and Philo and the rest of us, uh, that that <laughs> got stuck uh, when the when the D Democratic Party went off the rails and veered so far to the left, we don't recognize him anymore. Nope. But he's a reporter in the best sense of the word. I mean, he reports on everything. And it's called the uh, Freedom of Information Act uh, Files, How the Feds, Press, and Academia Coordinated on Speech. In uh, March 2023, the University of Washington Center for, informed public, uh, for an Informed Public, the CIP, put an article asserting that the Election Integrity Partnership, the EIP, comprised of the CIP, Stanford Internet Observatory, Graphica and the Atlantic Council's Digital Forensic Research Lab. Now, the Atlantic Council being Steve Jobs' wife, uh, I believe it's her little baby, was not a government cutout controlled by uh, controlled by the Department of Homeland Cyber Cyber uh, Cybersecurity (CISA). C I S A. Racket is sent out. That's his uh, news. Matt Taibbi's news uh, organization. It's called Racket, R-A-C-K-E-T. -E Sent out numerous FOIA requests, uh, and we received several new batches of results that cast doubt on their early assertions. Uh, let's see. On March 4th, 2021, now mind you, this is when... Uh, this is when Biden was saying, Fauci were saying, uh, look, you want to go to that university? You want to go to that store? You want to go here and there? You better get a, uh, you better get vaccinated. Uh, our patience is, we've got patience, but our patience is wearing thin. And we'll, we're going to have to have a vaccine passport. Yeah, yeah. I was prepared to stay home and lock myself in. I wouldn't get one. So March 4th, 2021, they emailed to ask the government officials to what they did uh, to stop disinformation from having a, a material effect on the uh, election that had just happened, or selection. That, oh man, don't get me going. The response came from Matt Masterson, at the time a non-resident policy fellow at Stanford Internet Observatory. He had just only, only just then finished working as a senior cyber uh, advisor at CISA, a position he held from March 2018 to December of 2020. He stayed there through the election, moved to Stanford just in time to receive her inquiry as a private citizen. His response is humorous in its frankness. Happy to talk regarding the work we, the feds, did in coordination with social media companies to anticipate and respond to efforts to undermine the election. This is why we should get on our knees and thank God that Elon Musk bought Twitter. He spent an exorbitant amount of money buying something that was way overpriced, but it was necessary to get it into the public domain, or uh, uh, private rather. Uh, for years, anti-disinformation activists have insisted that the state actors merely contacted social media companies with helpful tips regarding troublesome accounts. 
His response suggests that they were in close contact with platforms like Twitter, uh, though Ovide wasn't told how close. He's explicit in his characterization, uh, characterization as the uh, CISA dynamic as a coordinated effort. When reached for comment, Ovide directed Rack, uh, Racket to an article she published shortly after a conversation. Uh, she's totally, he told her that the coordination was the biggest change that helped shore up digital defenses and electric, uh, election management systems. Yeah, we saw how they managed that system. You know, how they had truckloads of ballots coming in at three in the morning in, uh, in Detroit and, uh, and putting up pizza boxes on the windows in Philadelphia. And uh, uh, suddenly a pipe springs a leak in Atlanta, but there's no plumbers and nobody, uh, nobody there to fix it. You know, oh yeah, yeah, that was a great election. Uh, let's see, the piece, to, uh, this is as good as the federal government has worked on any issue in my experience. Uh, this piece doesn't mention the EIP, but it still captures the degree that they were in contact with the officials. Uh, I find more evidence of the tight up relationship uh, in the following year, in March 14, 22. Nikki Vogt, senior advisor for public affairs, reached out to the uh, coordinator, they're messaging on Miss Info Day. Miss Info Day is an annual celebration intended to help students, educators, and librarians learn how to navigate complex information environments and make informed decisions about what to believe online. See, you gotta believe us, not them, us. Yes, it's like the good book says. Yeah, believe the government. It depends would on what we, book you wanna read. <laughs> yeah, would we lie to you? Of course. We're not like the other guys. Hey, we're Jerry Garcia. <laughs> uh, it is, uh, let's see, email mark uh, social uh, asked if the uh, EIP could amplify Misinfo Day themed graphics on its social media accounts. Also worth noting, as our team may have mentioned, they seem to be on very friendly terms. I'm so glad we can coordinate on this to help get the word out on both fronts. I'm looping in here my colleague Michael Grass, the CIP's Assistant Director for Communications. He's managing all of the social and other media for Miss Info Day and will be point on this. The word of the day is coordination. Uh, a few hours later, uh, the vote made contact with Grass who promised to share the content of uh, the CIP's Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn accounts indicated other schools would be participating on the misinfo 22 hashtag here's the tweet they provided and it shows that uh, these emails illustrate the synergies between the anti-disinformation industry and the national security state in theory the two factions are supposed to be separate entities but in practice they represent the same interests it's not often that a single disclosure offers evidence of the alacrity in which the EIP did the bidding of the federal law enforcement agencies. We should be grateful for their candor. Because see, they know that nothing's gonna happen to them. Because even if you get a Republican Congress, they're not gonna cut off their funding or anything. Nothing, nobody will get fired. Uh, it's gonna take uh, Trump and a government shutdown to, to get rid of these rats. And we have to, we have to. All our lives, me and Philo and us uh, gray hairs have been watching this government get bigger and bigger and more out of control. And if you get in their way, they'll kill you, okay? It's just that simple. You get in their way, they'll kill you. They don't care if you're the president, if you're a civil rights leader like MLK, if you're the president's brother like RFK, they kill you, okay? That's just it, you're out of the way. And they tried to do it to Trump a month ago, yesterday, exactly 30 days ago, 31 days ago. Below are a few more experts from the batch of disclosures, and it's like, it's crazy. If you go to uh, the racket, you can read some of this stuff. You don't have to subscribe. A lot of it's uh, free. It's just freaking crazy. How are we doing on time, Philo? You've got about three minutes. 
three minutes, man. Keep, keep going. I'll let you know. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> and I'm getting sick of people. I'm getting sick of people telling me to be safe, Bonlo. Oh, yeah, be safe, right. <laughs> you know, what is this? We're, we're two years post-pandemic now? Three years, maybe? Hey, you got to have that double mask on and, and, and 19 vaccines, you know? Yeah, the boosters. I, I still have people telling me to be safe. I had this guy in Oregon uh, I was talking to. He told me to be safe, and I'm all like, what? I'm all like, be safe from what? I says, I'm up here in the boonies near the Canadian border. I'm all like, you know, uh, is there a terror? Is there a terrorist incident coming my way? Oh yeah, for sure. Should I have my 357 with me at all times? Yes. <laughs> well, we do that anyways up here. <laughs> I mean, God help the person who robs a bank, <laughs> who tries to rob a bank up here. Yeah, everybody goes into a bank wearing a mask. You don't know who's going to hold you up and who isn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I pity I pity the fool that try and rob a bank, because they'd get out to the parking lot and there'd be at least at least a couple of customers who would draw down on them and hold them there till the cops got there. Yeah, be safe. From what exactly, you know? Oh, today the market opened. Uh, gold was down a little bit, twenty four ninety five, so twenty five hundred an ounce, and oil at seventy eight bucks a barrel. Now, if Trump was president, oil would be around maybe 30, 40 bucks a barrel. And we got to fill up the strategic reserve. We got to get down the cost of transportation, uh, the cost of fertilizers, because once you dro drop the price of oil, everything else goes down with it. Uh, and if it doesn't go down with it, what we're going to have to do is raise wages to compensate for what Biden and Kamala did to us. We're gonna have to like double the uh, social security payments, right, Bilo? Oh, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, we we'll have to, because uh, at least go up by a third. And just remember, folks, from this boomer, I'm still paying in. Yeah, yeah, because he works a part-time job. It's crazy. Well, all, almost full-time. Yeah, and uh today at the opening oh and we're running a annual deficit of 1.9 to 2 trillion dollars according to the congressional budget office at, oh how nice yeah that's what that's another thing that's contributing to uh, um, inflation is these stupid deficits the government has got too big it's like the department like Trump says with the Department of Education be the first to go what are they doing I mean other than mandating putting coat uh, tampons in, in boys bathrooms and uh and and taking away taking away uh, students from their parents if they won't give them a sex change what does the department of education do okay not steve then. last but not least oh man last but not least yeah oh well i guess that's it man i think it okay yeah. Oh, eight babies were euthanized. I think I mentioned this last week. Eight babies were euthanized in Minnesota, according to just the news. They were uh, they were killed. They came to uh, they were fully brought to term, and uh, they were removed from the mother's womb, and uh, and they were killed. That is not an abortion. That is infanticide. Anyways, God help us as a nation. Once again, you wasted a perfectly good hour of your life watching this stupid show. So hopefully we'll see you again next week. Inshallah, as the Hebrew say, good Lord willing, creek don't rise. Until then, get down on your hands and knees in the men only moss. Sniff the bum of the guy in the man dress in front of you. Head east and worship the rock in Mecca. And go, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Garcia. Thank you and good night. Jerry. Jerry. Plank at 127. 
So those are people with official titles at Planned Parenthood being recorded and they didn't know it, talking about how they are basically, oh yeah, a liver high demand. So they abort the baby and then they'll cut the baby up illegally. And then under the surface, they will sell the baby body parts for other medical experimentation, things that you're not supposed to be doing. Felony violation of the partial birth abortion law. Be like you were evil. So that that is a abortionist at a conference talking about every time I do a DNA and like oh there's a, a a lung there is a kidney there is a stomach. It is fair to summarize that basically these abortion clinics are just like auto part junkyards. Cyclops in the clan. You got to know the difference. That's stolen valor. <laughs> That's why I decided to run for president, because the, 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 the Klan isn't wearing their uniform anymore. And so you've got to get out there and vote January 6th, uh, excuse me, October 7th, Obama, Harris, Biden. I'm in there somewhere. Come and go. Change.